Good morning and welcome to St. Wilfred's Morning Prayer. My name is Sandra and I'll take you through the morning prayer today. For those at home with an Anglican prayer book, we start on page 42. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness for our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves his service. God feeds his people with the bread of life. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Praise the Lord. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. In a time of silence, let us call to mind and confess our sins. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in nearness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm set for today is Psalm 75, and it can be found on page 696 of your Anglican prayer book. We give you thanks, O God, we give you thanks. We call upon your name and tell of all the wonders you have done. I will surely appoint a time when the Lord will judge with equity. Though the earth shake and all who dwell in it, it is I that have founded its pillars. I will say to the boast, boasters, boast no more, and to the wicked, do not flaunt your horns, do not flaunt your horns so high, or speak so proud and stiff-necked. For there is none from the east or from the west or from the wilderness who can raise up. But it is God who is the judge, who puts down one and exalts one another. For there is a cup in the Lord's hand, and the wine foams, and is richly mixed. He gives it in turn to each of the wicked of the earth, and they drink it and drain it to the dregs. But I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. I will glorify his name forever. All the horns of the wicked I will break, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted high. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue on page 46. The first scripture reading for today is from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakiliah, in the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burnt with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love and those who love him and obey his commands. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants. The people of Israel, I confess with the sins of, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if you are exiled people or at the furthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favour in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. Hear the word of the Lord. We continue with the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from the enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine upon those who dwell in darkness and to shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Our second reading this morning is taken from the last book in, this, in, in the Word, Revelation 5 verses 11 until Revelation 6 verse 11. So it's Revelation 5 verses 11 
to write Revelation 6 verse 11. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain, to receive power and wealth, wisdom and strength, and honour and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea, and all that is in them singing, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice, like thunder, Come! I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come! Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take the peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come! I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures, saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and wine. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come! I looked, and there before me was a pile horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony that they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord? holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer, until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed as they had been was completed. Hear the word of the Lord. We continue with the song of the church. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord God, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. 
Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. This morning's message I'll be taken from the first reading we did from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. And as I was preparing this sermon and the message today, I realized once again what an awesome God we serve and what a powerful tool prayer is. Who is Nehemiah? Nehemiah was a light person in the king's palace. He was the king's cupbearer. In other words, the, God, the king trusted Nehemiah with his life, but he was also the king's coven, uh, confidant. He played a very important role in the palace, in the day-to-day -day running of the palace, which put him actually in a perfect place to oversee the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. And this would have been the third attempt to rebuild the walls. But then Nehemiah received news. One day his brother returned from home saying that things are not good, that they're actually not very, that, that things are actually very bad. And as soon as Nehemiah heard this news, he, re he really he realized he needed to do something. But what as he had a very, but he had a very demanding job. And does that sound familiar to you and me? How often do we receive bad news unexpectedly? And at that moment, we can't do anything. Or well, that is what we actually think. God actually, through the access of the palace, put Nehemia in a very, very important position. To, in term, to, to intervene. And if we think about it, isn't it amazing how God put us at a specific time, at a specific place, without realizing it at that moment? And in our lives, it doesn't necessarily have to be a palace. It can be our workplace, where you're making a difference in a colleague's life. It can be in our community, where you reach out a caring hand to somebody or just a friendly smile to the cashier in the shop. In our own lives, in our own family, direct family lives, where you and I can sow the seeds of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. God does not look at our CVs or credentials. He looks at our hearts. Now back to the, uh, uh, back to the, um, the people of God, to Israel. They had just come through a very difficult time, only to find themselves in another difficult situation. When they returned to Jerusalem, the walls were burned down, broken down, the, do the doors were burned down. So Jerusalem at that stage was actually very vulnerable to attacks from the enemy. They were paralyzed by fear to such an extent that they, they didn't do anything. They didn't... They were just paralyzed. They didn't come up with a plan, unable to take action, unable to think about the way forward. And if you think about it, how often do you and I get into a situation that paralyzes us with fear and that we see no way out, unable to pray and unable to act? But interestingly enough, it was not just the walls of Jerusalem that were broken. Their relationship with God was also broken due to their sin. And their sin kept them from being restored with God, to be a unit with, in unity with God. Nehemiah realized that more than just realized that it is just that it is more than just the walls that needed rebuilding. As the chapter unfolds, 
The broken walls are met by the broken heart of Nehemiah. And that's how the rebuilding starts again. In fact, Nehemiah was so moved by the dilemma that he mourned and fasted and prayed for days on their behalf to God. In other words, he was interceding for them to God. He pleaded for God to listen. He pleaded, he prayed, and he confessed their sins, his own as well. He even cited scripture that emphasized the mercy of God. And he prayed God for favor in these circumstances. How often do you and I look into our own prayer life? How often do you and I pray for each other? How often do you and I intercede for each other? Do you have that one special person that you can reach out to and say and, and, and ask to pray with you and pray for you? Keeping a prayer journal is an excellent way to go back in the times of doubt and need and to see how God answers our prayers. We can learn from Nehemiah's prayer a, a, a few very important things that we can also apply to our own personal prayer life. Prayer must be a habit and not the last resort. Find that one time in your day that you can sit and spend time in God's presence. Not going down a list like a shopping list, but sit in His presence, be quiet, listen to Him. God must hear my heart and I must listen to God's heart and He must not, and not just hear mine. It must be a passion and not just a passing thought. Through, pray, through prayer, we acknowledge God's character. We acknowledge Him as our Creator, as our Savior. We confess our needs. God wants to bless us in everything that we do. Through our friendships, through our work, through our finances, through our daily chores, all we need to do is come and ask Him in humbleness. Prayer must be born out of, hum out of our humility over our need. It must grow out of our brokenness over our sin. And prayer must be confident that God will supply that God will answer our prayers. Let you and I take this, that we can learn from Nehemiah and pray that the elements of Nehemiah's prayer be part of your and my daily prayer life. Amen. To continue on page 48 with the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We pray for our country. Almighty God, the Father of us all, we ask you to inspire the people of this land with a spirit of justice truth and love so that in all our dealings with one another we may show you together we are one in you for the sake of jesus christ our lord we pray for responsible citizenship lord jesus christ the length breadth depth and height of your love is beyond our understanding Grant that this love may so transform us through your suffering as to make us reach out to the despairing and the desperate and the work for justice, reconciliation and peace among all people for your name's sake. We pray for the unemployed, Heavenly Father, creator and giver of all good things, your son learned a carpenter's trade. Protect and defend all who suffer poverty and deprivation from being without work. Guide the people of this land so to use its wealth and resources that all may find employment. Receive just payment for their labor through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for our homes. Visit, Lord, our homes and drive far from them all the snares of the evil one. Let your holy angels dwell in them to preserve us in peace. And may your blessing rest upon us forevermore through Jesus Christ, our Lord. the collect of the day Lord Jesus Christ you came among us as the servant of us all overturn our wrongful pride and make us eager to serve our brothers and sisters with loving self-sacrifice for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen We pray together the collect of peace, O God, the author of peace and lover of concord. To know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all the assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray the morning collect, eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to you, your service and live this day in love for you and one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.
forever. Amen.